Yeah, nice, nice to see all of you. Uh huh. This was from uh, last time. Our very interesting attacking game. I think you all remember it. Uh, what was the best move here? Anyone? Anyone remembers this or, or no? Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe we remember it. 94 says Brian. Marcus also 94. Happy Pond says I remember. Okay, good for you, Mr. Tricky Dude. Everybody wants to play 94. All right. That sounds uh, promising. Let's say then I take and I play King G7. Just for me to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Uh, please carry out here the, the key variation. I'll uh, make this a quiz. Give me just a little a moment here and see if I can bring this up. All right, here we go. You get uh, 30 seconds for this mission. So white to play and basically finish off this game. Aha, you can get the first move in the chat, right? If you look carefully in the chat, you can find the first move. I'm sorry, little chess player. We said that in that case, I can go rook h8 and the tension on the h file favors me probably. Daniel Best, congratulations. Your first Xalicia chess, second place, chess crusher, Brian Alg. We have at least five winners so far, or perhaps even six. Aha, Gordon and Hollow Blade, you want to take immediately? Oh, can you do that also? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe you can take immediately. What if I play rook takes h4 there? Uh, Gordon, GM, Hollow, and Marcus. Maybe I could play that. So, Ryan and Mr. Chicky, you also got it. Aha. Um, yeah, let's uh, see here. Um, Daniel Best, you you are the fastest, so I really ha have to give the, you the move. So please, please go ahead and, and uh, let us know how to how to continue here. Um, I'm struggling to get my settings right. Yeah, all right. So C4, we said this is very useful to play this at this very moment because once we go Queen D2, that would be like a double threat. If we start with Queen D2, which is like the most uh, obvious move, Black could play Rook H8, and there is tension on the H file, which means that if C4 Black and then take, which is not what we wanted, of course. So the move order matters. Daniel says C4 first. All right, I will go back with the bishop because I know that things are difficult for me anyway. In this way, I at least avoid rook takes 7 Now we go queen d2. Now there is the big threat of mate on h8 or h7. I have to play rook h8. And uh, then we just continue with our plan. At this point, black is unfortunate that they cannot go back with the king. That would have been great, but... As you can see, the queen needs to keep track of the rook. So f6 has to be played. The queen is overloaded here to two functions. So we take. Unfortunately, the king is also overloaded to two functions. So the king takes. White finally uh, crashes uh, through here with knight takes f6. Exactly. And we get back the material. And more importantly, we are still attacking white's, uh, I mean, black's king here. We, we take with the rook, of course. And yeah, we have a lot of threats and we, we are not in any danger. They can't even check us here. Oh, well, we could maybe play King H2. That's a luxury choice. Uh, yeah, yeah, hollow. Salem was white and uh, black was... Oh, I don't even remember this. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Stanley, Stanley, uh, Indian player. Yeah, uh, international master or grandmaster, perhaps. Yeah, that's that's the... that. These were the players. All right. Speaking of uh, Indian players, yeah, 2460 international master. I see happy. Uh, hello, Blade. Yeah, thanks. Speaking of Indian players, today I wanted to show you two games by the same uh, player, very strong grandmaster from India, young player in the new uh, generation. Uh, who do you think I will show you games with? N no, I'm sorry. It's not Vidit. It's not Pragananda. I could also uh, show you many games by them, but I had someone else in mind. It's not Arjun. It's not Gukes. It's not Vishenand. It's a younger player. All right. So who is missing in this long list? Who is missing? Let's see. From this golden generation. But Indian players, uh, Michael, uh, Marcus. Uh, Tactical Magician says, Eric Geis. Yeah, somebody said Arjun. I thought you were mentioning him. Uh, yeah, who is missing? I will add uh, the example and you will see who is missing. It's actually not, uh, it's not Mishra either. Wow. So many strong players from India that we don't, uh, <laughs> we can't keep track of all of them. But uh, here we go. Exactly, Nihal, you forgot about him. Very, very strong Grandmaster, very entertaining games. So I wanted to start with this game, then I have another game prepared. I hope we will have time for both of them. This is from the Qatar Masters. He's playing as the Grandmaster from Iran. 
Musavi with the white pieces. I'm not an expert on the English. I will say that already now so that we don't have any misunderstandings, especially not the symmetrical in English, which comes up here. But I thought also it could be interesting for us to see that even in openings like this, which you would say they are more long term or maybe more dry, positionally tense uh, battles and so on. Even there, there, there is a potential for attacking play, right? That's what I wanted to say. You don't only need to play like, um, yeah, what could it be? Some Cecilia Neidorf to get an attack. Many other openings also uh, allows us to play for an attack. So, yeah, Nihal is so obvious, says Hollow Blade. Yeah. I, I know there are many strong players from India. He's he must be one of the in the top ten at least of of this country. So let's continue. Yeah, G three and knight f three. That's like a big choice. Uh, it depends on your opening repertoire. If you play knight f three, uh, I guess one of the lines that you have to study then is the one with queen b six, right? Uh, this one, I think. This is still very topical. I have seen some crazy games where they even play like. I guess you guys have seen this also, where they play. Yeah, how do they do this? Like, like they go and take this pawn. They white goes like this and black plays like that. And yeah, maybe you're better with this. I I don't really remember it. How how, how is it that you go like ninety four and they just you give up the pawn? Bishop f four, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's how they play play it. And maybe then it's ninety four. There is some ex incredible variation like this, and they let black take on f two. Yeah, you can check your opening books and so on. You can find this variation. Yeah, completely crazy. Uh, stuff uh, that you can play with white uh, if you're well prepared and so on. In this game, Musavi plays g3, which is like more standard uh, English way of playing with Fianchetto and so, so on. And uh, Nihal goes for d5, a very respectable choice. Basically, black is playing the uh, Maroxi with reversed colors, right? I hope we all understand what's, what I'm saying here. Uh, we're basically saying that the white, I mean, black is playing like if they were playing white in the in the Sicilian, uh, uh, how is it? Accelerated dragon, right? Like like this, for instance. Basically, we are playing the same position like this. Here, very often, white will play bishop e3 and just go for the Maroxi, Maroxi bind. However, in our case, since black is doing this with the black pieces, uh, we're a tempo down, which means that we cannot play exactly uh, the same thing. Because now, yeah, if we play bishop e6 here, it's... it's um, blocking the pawn. So anyone, what does uh, black play here? Just to see if we're on the same page. What do they play here? No, they don't play e6 here. If you play e6, I think you end up in some kind of taras or, or something. I don't think they play e6 so often, but I might be wrong. Knight takes e3, they also don't play that very often. I guess white is happy about their pawn, uh, their pawn chain or pawn center and so on. Knight b6, they also don't play that. Oh, I thought you knew this. Maybe it's too old-fashioned, this line. For you, you know the new stuff here. Knight c7, you right L. That's what happy pawn. That's right. Knight c7. Everybody plays like that. I don't want to bore you with this uh, theoretical uh, discussion, but please notice that back in the 1990s or no, in the 2000, 2005, there was a book about uh, beating the Sicilian. I think it was called or experts, experts versus the Sicilian. And uh, Grandmaster Peter Heine Nielsen, I think he recommended exactly this line. Knight c2. That's good to know. It's the same way of thinking. And it can actually transpose into what you will see now. So I think the main line goes like this. Svidler versus Tivyakov. That was the key game. So Tivyakov, one of the best players in the world on the on the Maroxi, on the Accelerated Dragon, he played knight 7 and I think Svidler played bishop d2, and knight c5 he played b4. Yeah, you can look up this game, guys, if you like. Svidler, I can write it. Yeah, exactly. Happy Pawn. 2005 Expert versus Sicilian. Svidler Versus Tivyakov. It's not easy to beat Tivyakov in the Maroxi. So uh, this is a good game that you could have interested anyone. And I think they took like that and it was not supposed to be very good. And then Svidler had a very nice nice position here. You can see even b5 and queen d4 and things like that. So anyway, I'm just saying this so that you get like the whole picture. Mostly nowadays they play with uh, bishop e3 here. They just play like that. Bishop e3 and knight f6. Knight c3 and bishop e2 and castles and all that. But in that book uh, published almost 20 years ago, uh, Grandmaster Peter Heine Nielsen, he said that knight c2 might be a very interesting choice. I think what Nielsen was explaining was that in the Maroxi structure, four uh, pairs of minor pieces favors white because there is less space on the board. That's, that was his point, that if you play this kind of stuff, you haven't traded these two knights. 
black uh, pieces. You can see that, for instance, they are perhaps both of them are fighting for this one and so on. So avoid trade. Exactly. Happy found white has more space as 206. Aha. They said that. Uh, Nielsen, I remember this very clearly. He said, in the Maroxi, uh, somehow four uh, pairs of minor pieces, uh, minor pieces seem to favor white. Uh, favor white. I I'm writing this so that you can yeah, think about it. As well as one pair or none. Right or none, no, no pairs of minor pieces. There is a famous game by Botvinnik, by the way, where he wins like that. Uh, also, Tal versus uh, Larsen. There is a game with reversed colors. Larsen with white playing the accelerated dragon. So none, no minor pieces. It's very good for for the one who is sitting with uh, with, with this uh, structure. But then what Nielsen exactly hollow blade. So that was my next point. So Nielsen said, uh, yeah, Nielsen said that two or three pairs of minor pieces somehow uh, favors black. I mean, favors black in the sense not that black is better, but it's it's better for black, so to speak, to have two or three pairs, because then you have just enough pieces to cover the squares and so on. Like, if you think of, for instance, if, we, yeah, we will, we will, we're talking attacking chess today, so I won't do this for too long, but if you think, for instance, about the very main line here, uh, I'm not an expert, but let's say I do my best here to play like the main line. You take and you play a5, b3, bishop c6, queen b2, knight e7. Anyone, should white trade bishops or should white keep bishops? Aha, we should keep the bishops. Yeah, if you play this with white, you know this, of course. Yeah, don't trade the bishops. That's one of the few Sicilians where you're not happy to trade those bishops. You play bishop e3 and I think the best plan is to go like slowly for queenside expansion. If you instead trade, black is usually very happy about that. You can check out Tivyakov's games, right? Tivyakov. Tivyakov games, that's best model player in the Sicilian uh, Accelerated Dragon that I can think of, at least. And, and especially if Black is able to like trade off these also, it would be great for them. This would be like Black's favorite scenario to have a uh, good knight versus bad bishop. This is not what White would like of, at all, right? Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, about trades in the Maroxi structure. Uh, we can maybe come back to this one day, right? But let's now get going with our attacking game. We're talking about uh, Musavi versus Nihal. So Nihal plays this system like the one that Heine Nielsen was uh, uh, recommending in that book many years ago. And uh, yeah, that's how this game goes. But this is a modern game. And uh, Musavi, he soon goes for a very dynamic plan. So 92, we saw that in the other line also, right? The knight is coming towards c4 black simply develops the knight came to c4 and now black continues with the maroxi bind so you would say hey but how can i attack in the maroxi bind well you can but also it depends on what white does here so at this point uh, yeah down a tempo you're right the hollow blade we're always down down a tempo here at this point what white can play which is very interesting they can play bishop takes c6 pawn takes and queen a4 this is a very topical variation i would not like to play this too much with white but I certainly understand it. White is saying that, all right, you have weaknesses in the long term. I will attack these weaknesses and so on. So this is fully playable. No? It's fully playable to, to do this with white. Some people with black, they don't like this. And they try to throw in like, yeah, bishop d7 or something to take with the bishop. But that takes more time. Uh, most players with black, I think they are ready. They're up for this fight. They're, they're ready to, to take and double the pawns. But something happened here. White played instead the move f4, which is perfectly possible. That's another way to fight against the Maroxi bind. Black took on f4, and after bishop takes f4, Nihal simply castled. So I think, but I don't want to speak against the uh, Iranian grandmaster here, but he now took on c6. And I think it's slightly logical. It's slightly logical. If you really want to play like that, leave black with these uh, double pawns, I think you should do it already on move. 10 here. You should do it without like that. You should do it without f4. I don't think you ever touched the well, you touched the f-pawn, but only to go one step, I think, in this kind of position. You don't go two steps because you open up the game. So, I don't know. Maybe I missed something, but I think it's a dangerous combination of plans. If you go for f4, you should probably just castle here and just play normal uh, normal game. Castles, white, black will play maybe like that, and queen d7, white has some plans of, I don't know, Rook c1, maybe uh, try to bring the knight to attack this pawn or something like that. Roughly equal, I would think. Uh, it has been played many times in, 
in uh, in practice. But in the game, they played bishop takes c6, which is dangerous long term because now white's king is a little more open. Queen a4 was played in the game. The pawn is being attacked. The pawn itself, it's not a big deal for black, but of course they don't want white's queen to, to invade, right? So they played here bishop d7. At this point, uh, black uh, has something prepared here. If white plays a move like, uh, let's say they play queen a5, let's say they try to target this knight. Uh, anyone, what would you do with this knight? Knight e5, exactly, hollow blade. This is what I wanted to touch on very briefly. Often, double pawns can provide... Uh, strongholds, uh, or what would you say? Support for our minor pieces, right? For our minor pieces. Yeah. Okay, Sartak, nice to see you again. So, knight e5, this would be a good move. We are okay to trade queens here with black. We have some kind of um, dynamic compensation. If they take, of course, we're very happy that we can take black. Anyway, this looks like heaven for white. Once you will see the game, you will say that this is heaven. If I now, for instance, go back with the bishop and I don't trade. This is much better than the game. So, I think... If you played like this with white, go for queen a5, try to trade off the queens. That would be the best idea here. But in the game, white simply uh, castle instead. They played here. Let's see if I can get this right. They, no, they took on c7. Yeah, before they, they didn't want black to play knight uh, d5. They took on c7. And after queen takes um, c7, they played. Oh, now they played queen a5. Yeah. One last thing I wanted to ask you also. If I played here the move... Um, Castles. Uh, anyone, what would you play with black? Aha, we can play that again, Hollow. We can play knight e5. And I wanted to ask you something, Hollow. You will help me with this. You're playing with the black pieces. If I play bishop d6, uh, Hollow, trying to trade off your proud bishop pal, what would you play? Aha, knight b6, a very clever move. Maybe I can try to trade off pieces, though. Maybe I could try to take and... You take back and I try to put my queen somewhere. Even this I don't like for for uh, for white. Yeah, definitely not my, my kind of game. I can see that the queen is coming this way. So I think that's a nice plan. Yeah, I, I will agree on that, uh, Hollow. But you can also win the exchange if you like. Anyone can win the exchange with black? I don't uh, quiz you on this because it's too simple. Exactly, Brian. Yeah, bishop h3 or like Brian says, we can take first also. And then we can play bishop h3. Yeah, exactly. So that's the reason why perhaps uh, in the game Musavi quickly traded off the knight before the knight gets annoying. Also, by the way, if they played castles, you, you said knight e5. But actually, you can also go this way. I, I have seen this idea also. You can bring the knight in that way. So no matter how you look at this, it looks pleasant for, for black. All right. They played in the game. Bishop takes. And after uh, queen takes uh, c7. Yeah, queen c6. Interesting variation. Uh, yeah, no spam, please. Yeah, please keep the chat clean so that we can communicate and so on. So queen takes, queen a5, and just for me to make sure that you and me we're on the same page, uh, let me just ask, ask you for black's next move. Uh, careful, you have only 10 seconds, so make your choice quickly. Yeah, exactly, Brian, John, Sam, Mr. Chicky, Elephant, Marcus, Gordon, Hollow. That's just common sense. Aha, don't trade queens, please, if we are <laughs> thinking that our opponent king is weaker. So. You're right, uh, Yugoslavian, you were fastest here, or one of the fastest. What would you play here? Uh, I'm trying to give the move to, to Yugoslavia. Maybe I can't. Let's see. All right, now it should be, though. Queen b7, we keep the queens on. It's going to go to the king side later, but right now it was not physically possible to go to this side. But we will do that later, don't worry. Uh, and black is up a piece. You're talking about some... Uh, I don't like to have any like uh, open questions or, or so to speak. I would like to fix any doubt that you have. So you're talking about something here. Anyone, could you tell me what you were talking about? You're talking about this, I think. You're saying that you could play queen takes e6. That's the variation that you're discussing, right? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what's, what's going on here. Uh, maybe I should go like knight... Uh, could I go back with the knight, perhaps? Like knight e7? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking also. Queen takes and I'll take and... Um, yeah, maybe white is okay in this position. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's not a big deal for black. I, I prefer black though. I think uh, it's a rather open game and I have the exchange. You have two pawns. Yeah, maybe not then. Maybe you're right. Maybe it was better to, to play like, like you were saying. Maybe we should just play... What did you say? 
Night P5, maybe. Maybe that's better for, for that reason. We stop Bishop T6. Interesting. Or even White was better there. Yeah, maybe. You can also take on C3, says uh, Hollow Blade. Yeah, so if, if you do this again, Bishop D6, take, take. We can take first, you mean, right? But then there is maybe Queen takes, uh, Queen check also, right? Maybe there is something like this and that. So maybe not fully convincing, no? Double-edged, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh -huh. I'm not completely sure. I'm not completely sure. I will, I will say that I like this move more. <laughs> uh, especially if I can plant a knight on d4 and make you play e3 and soften up your squares even further. I think maybe we have this in the pocket, right? We can do this later. So, yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's get going. It's a very entertaining game and it's not, the, the attack hasn't yet started. So let's get a little closer to the, to the action here. So queen b7, finally white castles. Uh, some of you might say, but maybe we should castle long. Once you see the game, you will say that this is a better place for the king. But I'm not completely sure black can go for a, an attack anyway, right? And at some point, maybe this bishop can wake up and so on. In the game, they castle uh, short and black first put the bishop on e6. Uh, I won't tell you too much about this move. It's a very good move, but I don't want to give away the whole story. One thing here is, of course, that you might be interested in taking the pawn on, on b2. At least you have it as an as an approach for later. And there might also be some idea with bishop d8. Anyway, white played b, b3, and now definitely it's quiz time here. So I will only ask you for the next move, I think. Uh, yeah, I'll only ask you for one move. So, okay, 206, this was too easy for you. Yeah, you know these attacking games, that's our topic today. Uh, we are attacking the castle king. That should uh, make things a bit simpler. Elephant, you're right. Wow, some people want to trade queens. You, you're in the wrong lesson, I think. No, I'm just joking. Of course, you can look at that also. It's, it's completely uh, possible to play like that. But uh, yeah, I think what... Uh, 206, Elephant, uh, Xalicia and RB are saying that's the most promising plan. I say that because I saw the game and that's what Nihal played. Uh, so let's see here very quickly. 206, you can uh, share with us what do you think Black should play in this position. How to get the attack going. Aha, here we go. F5. We are somehow trying to punish White for their lack of a, of a F pawn, right? And also they don't have any minor pieces on the king side. They don't have a fianchetto bishop. So this move, it has basically two, uh, two ideas. There are two ideas with this move. One idea, aha, to bring in the bishop like that. And the other idea is simply to continue to open up the game. That's what we want to do here. We have the bishop pair. They have no defenders on the king side. So... Opening up space for the attack, you could say, f5. All right, you were looking at many other moves. Bishop h3 is a typical move that we would like to keep in the pocket. I guess if you play that, uh, Sartak and company, I would play rook f2. And yeah, what would I do next? I'm not so sure, actually, what, what would I do next. Uh, e3, maybe. Um, put a knight on e4, possibly. Yeah, queen d7, I understand. You want to somehow mate me on the, on the light squares. Yeah, what would I play here? This is already coming. Yeah, it's nightmare to play this with uh, with the white pieces. Definitely not my my kind of game. Uh, knight e4. Can I can I even play that or or you have f5? I would love to play knight e4, but I, I'm afraid you have f5 and if knight takes e5, there is queen d4. You're attacking many things at the same time. How about f5 now? Yeah, interesting also. Um, what else could I possibly play here? Wow, rook some somewhere right? Rook c1 maybe just to keep this defended and. But looks looks terrible. Yeah, looks at least for me it looks very difficult to play this. Maybe I can put a knight on a4 instead and try to bring bring back the queen. Something like queen d4. All right, if you go queen d4, I need to smoke out that queen. So move my knight somewhere. What should I possibly play here? Knight knight d1 maybe to play queen queen c3 perhaps. Yeah, looks highly suspicious. <laughs> I agree. 91 is good. You say hollow. Yeah, I don't know. I am not sure. I'm trying to survive here, basically, in this position. But uh, unpleasant. A even the H pawn, right, could soften up uh, the position here at some point. I like that that plan, like a majority tag. You see, there are two pawns and we have three. So we would love to, like, trade off one pair of pawns and leave them with just one pawn that we could attack or something like that. So, yeah, maybe, maybe. Many ways we can play here. Uh, but let's come to the game here. 206 told me that f5 was the best move, and uh, I think so too. It's a very natural attacking move, trying to bring more uh, pieces to the attack and trying to open up the game. 
White, what about Queen G7? Yeah, if you want Queen G7. Um, but let's see here. Can I go Knight? I would have to go Knight E4, but then you go F5. And if Knight takes E5, you have Queen D4. That's the problem, right? So I can't get away with that. Yeah, why on earth? Wow. So difficult to defend White here. Anyone who understands this, how to defend White? Knight A4, am I supposed to play that? He did that in the game, by the way. Maybe I, maybe I should play that. Although it looks horrible. Right, Rook 81. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 91 going the same way. But then maybe you're blundering. Oh, you're not. Maybe not blundering. Yeah, I'll go for Knight A4 because I don't know where else to play. You know what? Maybe I could play. I was thinking maybe I could play Knight E4, and if you go F5, I go Knight E2, and I try to put my Knight on, on F3. But it looks terrible also. But maybe there is some point like having the Knights protected. Um, yeah, I don't know. Queen D7 definitely half a point. You get half a point for that. But, okay, he played f5 in the game. White played knight a4. They continue with his plan of hitting the pawn. Again, there was queen d7. I guess white could also think about bringing home the queen in that case. But uh, here, what he played, um, he saw that knight xe5 might come up next. Um, he found a very sneaky way of defending against this. So, how could I possibly guide you here to the right move? Um, yeah, by the way, if you want to play f4, uh, I would take on c5. I, I looked at this a little. It, it's not so clear that uh, it actually works for black, because if I can trade off that bishop, I can always hide with my king on h1 and so on. You probably need both bishops to make your attack work, right? So f4, it's, it's a little premature. But basically, since the bishop is being attacked, if the bishop was not attacked, black would have a very nice counterattacking idea. Um, maybe we could look at it in that way. You will move this bishop, and when I take, you will have a very sneaky defensive move. Yeah, you're getting closer, hollow blade. Queen b8 says hollow. So just for me to understand hollow, if I take then on c5, you wanted to take here, and then you wanted to like trap my... Nah, but I, I can't see this clearly hollow. Did you have something very clever here? Like bishop d8? Is that... No, queen e5, I can probably go knight b3. No? Or is this also very bad for me? Queen takes e2, rook e1, maybe. I'm not convinced, uh, Hollow. I'm sorry, I'm not convinced. Um, but you're getting closer. So, one good, uh, yeah, queen e3, rook f2, f4. Yeah, interesting variation, Marcus. Maybe I could try to like bring home the queen and try to trade it. But uh, let me write something to you very quickly here. Uh, one important uh, prophylactic idea. One important prophylactic idea. I talk about this in my book, Mastering Chess Strategy, by the way. Idea is to retreat a piece, retreat a piece before it's getting attacked. Yeah, this could be the king, of course. It could be the king. But in this case, yeah, Black has no issues with king safety here. Uh, it's the bishop which could be attacked, right? So, queen c8. Interesting move, queen c8. Yeah, I don't know. Can I? I will always ask the same thing. Can I take... Or do you have some sneaky tactic here? You want to play something like queen d8 or, or what? I don't follow. You want to take and play queen d8. I can see this uh, tactic, but it's not really working, right? I can probably take and I can play d4 and I should be okay in the endgame, I, I hope. Or at least not lost, right? Or, or something. Uh, is that what you mean? a6. You want to play a6? I don't understand. Why would you let me put a knight on b6? Or... Yeah, yeah, no, no point. Okay, guys, let's speed up a little, okay? Let's speed up a little. White's about to take on c5. We can't really stop that, right? We can't really stop that. Uh, you could play something like queen b5, of course, but then maybe I can go knight c3 and I'll try to trade off the, the queen, right? I would love to do this on, on every circumstance. I would love to trade off the queens. Uh, I don't get mated when, when you don't have the, the, the queens on, right? Bishop d5 says happy pawn. All right, congratulations, happy pawn. That's exactly what Nihal played. So happy pawn, you will have to help me then explain to me what happens if black, if sorry, if white then takes the pawn. What was your uh, subtle idea here? I said that first. Oh, sorry, I, I can't keep track of every message in the chat. I'm sorry. Exactly. Elephant chess genius, you got it right. Yeah, L008, queen b5 win stuff. That's right. That's exactly what happens. It's a... Funny tactic, you can see that this is the evident threat. Unfortunately, if I defend this uh, knight, 
I'm losing my queen. I, I mean, I lose a piece to this, what I call the lifeline, the lifeline. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics. Aha, Bishop takes you forward. The lifeline in the sense that we are profiting from, from a trade against an undefended enemy piece, right? That would be the point here. So uh, very sneaky move by Nihal, Bishop d5. Now knight takes c5 is not available. And at the same time, I hope this is clear for everyone. We're talking attacking games, right? It's great to have the bishop there. If you talked about some other bishop, bishop move, please notice this is the nicest place for, for the bishop, right? So, yeah, that's what happened in the game. Let's continue. Let's continue. So, e3 was played in the game so that f4 won't come. But there is this old Russian saying, if you really want to do something, you can do it. Or it, I, I don't know exactly how it goes in Russian, but something like that. If you really want to, to, to do something, you can do it. So having said that, I'll quiz you for the next move. Let's see if we can get this right. Now I will give you a slightly longer variation. I will tell you exactly what happened in the game, all right? So it's a little longer, so you get one minute, okay? If you really want to do something, just do it. But that's not really the same thing. I'm talking about the possibility of achieving something. But something which looks un impossible to achieve it, you can actually achieve it. Sometimes, right? You just have to look beyond some initial obstacles and so on. All right, can King Sam and Mr. Chicky wants to trade queens? If you play that, I think we just talked about this. I told you I would play knight c3 in that case. We can talk about that. Elephant, tactical, Brian and HDI, you're extremely close. If you play like that, I'll take back. Uh, obviously, yeah. <laughs> and then I don't know if you can mate me. But you're definitely on the right track. Yeah, you have understood this. Okay, who else? Uh, okay, we have some more neutral moves like bishop d5 and g5 and so on. Uh, nobody, nobody found uh, what Nihal played, but you're very close. Yeah, you're very close, some of you. You understand that we should open up the king side as soon as possible, right? So let's uh, check with the uh, tactical magician. Please go ahead, tactical. Let's see if we can fix this in the very end. Yeah, let's see. So we go for an attack as soon as possible. If you play some slower move, like let's say bishop g5, I mean, apart from the fact that I could maybe take the pawn, also I'm interested in bringing in my, my rook. And don't forget that maybe at some point white could try to sack the exchange also in some way, if that could, is possible. But I think maybe not, not needed right now. Um, oh, I'm getting chest turnip. Maybe you could just send one message to chest turnip. You're like contaminating the chat. Uh, nobody else can can write there. So maybe a whole variation it's better if that's possible. All right. So uh, back to uh, to Tactical Magician. Tactical said that after e3, we should just go f4 anyway. And that's exactly what Nihal played. I have a first question for you, Tactical. If I take with a G pawn, which plan do you like for black? That's a mouse slip, I hope. You get a second chance. Aha, Queen is ever bringing in the Queen. I looked a little at this. You know what? Maybe I can do the same thing. I can also bring my Queen to the Battle. I have this in my course, by the way, mastering uh, chess defense, mobilization, I call this, bringing the queen to the defense. If you like uh, tactical, you can prevent my move. Exactly. Fast thinker, tactical, no? Fast thinker, he has seen that this is coming. And if I now try to, uh, let's say I played something like queen takes uh, c5 instead. Yeah, what would you play in that case? Now it's getting hot on the king side. No? Now it's getting very hot on the king side. We can just bring in the queen and attack. So that would be a smart move, I think, like restriction in the attack or something like that. We don't let the, the opponent defend in the way they would like to defend. Of course, they could go this way instead, right? They could play queen d2 and try to defend in that way. But even then, tactical could bring in the queen. Um, I'm not sure exactly which would be the best square right here, but maybe you can go to d7 or maybe to even to f7 and so on. And yeah, looks nice for, for black. Uh -huh. So anyway... Uh, they took with a pawn in the game. You can continue tactical while you're on the line. Now, as you can see, the G file is safe, but suddenly there are big problems on the uh, G1, A7 diagonal. So White, uh, Musavi played knight E5. That's obviously what uh, he was relying on to stop the bishop from entering. So this is a key moment. Some of you, sorry, tactical, we will look at that. Some of you were saying bishop takes E5. You have to attack really quickly here, right? You must attack quickly. If you can bring the queen to, to like g2, great. But I don't think that's going to be that simple. Um, also, I can try to play something like queen d2 and maybe h4 and king h2, and I'm hoping I can still stay alive. Yeah, so queen c queen c8, it's interesting uh, here, right? That's what tactical was saying. Here, queen c8. 
It's interesting, but I don't, I don't know if it's fully, fully working. Let's see. You want to play queen h3. I could also try to trade off this bishop, right? I could try to play something like knight, knight c3. Do I have time for that, or did I get destroyed? No, no one got past move three. You're right, uh, Gordon. Nobody got past. Only Nihal. <laughs> so maybe something like that. Bishop d8. Yeah, funny backwards move. Uh, yeah, I should definitely not take that pawn, whatever I do. I'll keep my queen on safer soil, like here. Or queen a3, maybe. Yeah, you're right, L, to bring the queen closer. Yeah, not convincing, not convincing. Uh, hint. Let's, let's, uh, let's ask you for this. Yeah, I'll quiz you for this instead. All right. I'll quiz you for the second part of the story. All right, here we go. But you get only 45 seconds. Uh, please notice, time is money. Don't be too materialistic uh, when you're attacking. It can be worth a minor investment to speed up the opening of, the, of, of space uh, in front of the opponent's king and so on. We have a first winner. Congratulations to L, who found this very clever plan. Yeah, it's working like a Swiss uh, clock, uh, this uh, attack for black. Connor, uh, Ryan and Chess Turnip, you are all other winners on this occasion. Charles, you also got it. Yeah, Queen C8, I, I, I support that move. Half a point if, if you play that. Congratulations, you're bringing the Queen to the attack. But there is a more powerful way of attacking. We talked about this already. If we go back a little, if we go back a little, we said F4, right? Open up new channels for our attack. And here we're actually going to do exactly the same thing. So please go ahead, uh, L. Uh, you notice this uh, very powerful attacking idea. Aha, he played g5. He's very interested now in opening up the, the g file for the attack to make use of his strong bishop. He wants to take and take and bring in the queen. Musavi took on c5. And the next move is not difficult, queen d5. I will be very honest with you. When I saw this game, I thought that White should have some way of like giving back one pawn or giving back two pawns and they would be able to save this game. But the computer said, no way, it's too late, it's too late. Black's attack is too strong. The whole game, it likes Black's position, by the way. Interesting, if you're interested in computer evaluations. It doesn't give White a chance here to, to save this game. And I think it's, like I said in the beginning, I think the combination of F4 and Bishop takes C6 is not healthy for white. But anyway, yeah, let's uh, look at this in concrete terms. So you're basically t threatening to take and my knight would be unstable. So in the game, uh, he played here d4. You can just continue, L. Aha, g takes f4 and this is the big threat. Unfortunately, I cannot take. This was probably the last variation that Nihal had to check. Rook takes. You can see that despite simplification, no way why can save this. His pieces are too absent from the king side. There is the triple threat of, yeah, you cannot defend against all these, right? So it's completely game over. So in the game, uh, Musavi played instead after g takes f4. He played queen c3. And yeah, the rest is not, not difficult. Uh -huh. Time is money. Just continue to attack. Okay, I will quiz. Uh, sorry, L. Sorry, L. We will let more people in. So uh, try to find here, everybody, uh, Nihal's clever way of uh, concluding this game. Let's see if I can get this right. Uh, let's do it like that. All right. So that you give it, you get a chance to mate me. So if everything turns out in the right way, you are mating me in the end here. Okay. F3, I would not play that move. You're helping my defense, I think, if you push the pawn. Um, I would then play rook f2, possibly. Oh, nobody's mating me so far. Maybe you have you found better options. Wow. F takes g3. Are you really letting me trade off the queens? That's a uh, yeah, gift from heaven, I think, if you let me trade queens. All right, we have some winners here. Elephant, John Sam, HDI, L, Legendary, and Chess Crusher, uh, Smart Goldfish, uh, Ryan, Hollow. Uh, yeah, a lot of people got it right. Nice. H5, I like that idea. Happy Pawn, Ananya. That's a very... Uh, technical way of, of continuing the attack. Uh, it's just that there is something faster, all right, on this occasion. So, okay, uh, Marcus, you can tell us. Marcus was one of the fastest, so please go ahead, Marcus. How did you attack here? Aha, Bishop H4, that's a pretty attacking move. It's very, very logical. We are attacking their opponent at their weakest spot. 
if you played f3, I don't think this is the right choice. I will try to put something on f2. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I can stay on for a while here. But even here, h5, h4 looks scary, as it does already in this position, h5, h4. What you should probably not do is this. If you played this, I'm sorry. That's a big misunderstanding. It could cost you half a point. If you let it trade queens, yeah, thanks for being so friendly to me. Uh, Bishop h4, that's what uh, he played in the game. Uh, Nihal and uh, Musavi tried knight e7. And you can, uh, you can imagine the rest here, uh, Marcus. Yeah, just go for it. There is a very nice attack. We don't care about uh, the rook being taken. We could just take back, right? So we just take on g3. And white soon collapsed here. I think he played some random move and he lost. But the key, yeah, what did he play in the game? I can I can show you, of course, what he did play. He played rook f3, but this move make, makes no sense at all. Uh, and he just resigned after d takes h2. And you can see it's hanging here and it's hanging there and so on. But I had as a, like a logical variation knight takes just to see that you could mate me here. Uh -huh. And most people were actually able to mate me. That's uh, saying thanks to the proud bishop pair. It's really an important, uh, yeah, attacking, uh, what can you say, uh, ingredient, the bishop pair, and I'm getting mated. So basically, that's what happened in this game. As always, it's interesting to check with the computer what did it say, what, what was the last chance, and so on. So it gave me some information here about this. The last chance, it says it was here after 95, g5. It says you should play here knight c3. I call this defensive exchanges. We try to trade off this giant bishop on d5. But this was very hard to see because after g takes f4, uh, you could not play knight takes d5 because I go bishop takes e5 and there are tactics coming up. Here you had to see a very difficult move. Uh, very, very difficult move. Completely logical to the position. You had to play here the move d4. So if you can see this at the board, congratulations. Then you're just fantastic with tactics. If you can find this, to me, it's uh, hard to believe that this will work. But OK, that's what the computer said. If you play like this, c takes d4, knight takes d5, pawn takes, and d takes f4, white would still be in the game playing like that. But very hard to see this. I think for a human, the position was already difficult. So if we go over it very quickly, we were seeing this Maroxi uh, with reverse colors. White mixed up perhaps the opening. They played f4, and they, later they played this move. Very dangerous to play like that due to king safety. And after that, Nihal, of course, no trade of queens. Uh, it was very important to understand this plan of pushing f5, f4. And after Bla black uh, played f4, we saw that the tactical magician showed that we could maybe bring in the, the queen to the attack if they're taking that way. Uh, if they take with the rook, by the way, you can just play exactly like... Maybe I should quiz you on this. Yeah, I, I will quiz you. I just want to see if we can... Uh, use the same plan as Nihal used. Let's see if anyone can can see this. It should be very easy for you. Uh, all right, you get only 40 seconds. Yeah, very well played by Nihal. This attack was basically without any without any mistakes. Aha, you write L and HDI. Uh, we just recycle the previous variation. Funny now that it works very well also in this way. Aha. Uh -huh. Daniel, Connor, Wyatt, that's right. Interesting, those of you who said Bishop G5, I finally get a chance to show an exchange sacrifice, perhaps. Or maybe not. Okay, we will come to that. We will come to that. Um, let's uh, invite uh, Alg. All right, Alg, you can show us. How should Black uh, continue in the event of Rook takes F4? Please go ahead. Aha, uh -huh. Rook takes. We just do the same thing. If they take like that, they open up the G file. But here they open up the diagonal. So go for it. Uh, uh, aha, that's right, Al. We just recycle what Nihal did in the game. Yeah, sometimes you can just do that, right? We're down two pawns, but unfortunately, they cannot cope with the pressure at their camp now. We have this giant threat that they cannot cope with. Uh, right? Not, yeah, D4, we just take it. It's, we're basically back in the game, right? Just that there are less... It's Yeah, it's just that there is one less pair of rooks, but it's basically the same thing, the same logic. If you played Bishop G5, yeah, I want to... Before we leave this game and look at the other game, I just wanted to say that if you play... Uh, how did we get there, by the way? If you play here Bishop G5 like that, I think I should just keep my rook there. Yeah, I should not move the rook. I should play something like Queen takes... 
C5, right? And if you take... I'm hoping that I can survive in this position. I'll try to put my knight on E5. Something like that. Tigran Petrosian would know this better, but... Something like that. If you try to bring in your rook, I'll try to play knight e5 and hoping that I can save this game somehow. Survivable, yeah. Something like that. Or knight xe5 says uh, chess crusher. All right, if you say so. I was just hoping to bring my queen a little closer, but knight takes, maybe that's okay also. Queen e7 looks a little unpleasant though, but you have some things to think about here. But maybe it also works, yeah. Anyway, that was a very nice game by Nihal. So please remember f4. Uh, it's worth a pawn. Uh, and if we go back to the game, it's also worth definitely a second pawn here. A second pawn, it's also worth g5. And this pawn is, yeah, it's, it's on the house, right? You can have it. I don't care about that pawn. It's not relevant in this story. And it, the attack was too strong. So nice, nice attack with the bishop. So this was Nihal on the winning side. Unfortunately, in our next game, uh, he didn't have the same success. And uh, I thought we could bring up a game where Nihal is facing a former world champion. So if I tell you that uh, this is a game between a former world champion and uh, Grandmaster Nihal, who do you think is sitting on the other side? No, it's actually not a nun. Uh, it's another uh, world champion. Aha. It's also not Kasparov. It's not Kramnik. You got it, Hollow Blade. So I found this game. Maybe you will laugh at this, but it's actually... Uh, game from the title Tuesday, you would say, hey, those games are not uh, useful for learning chess. They are just blitz games and so on, random stuff. But I don't think so. When very strong players play blitz, they play very well. You can see from Carson's games, they are sometimes masterpieces. And this was a very nice game that they played Kramnik and Nihal uh, on the 13th of June this year in the title, chess.com title Tuesday. So let's have a look at this game. It's funny that Kramnik, he is, he's facing... Uh, something that uh, he played himself once. Um, anyone, could you tell me when did Kramnik play the Pirk with the black pieces? In which game? Does anyone know that? It's not part of Kramnik's uh, repertoire, right? When did Kramnik use the... Yeah, trivia question. Aha, almost world championship. When did Kramnik use... When did Kramnik use the Pirk? Uh, no. Not in the in the candidates. Aha, that's right. Um, there is this story. You can Google it and you can get the better explanation than the one I'm giving you. But th it happened that when Magnus Carlsen was making his way towards the World Championship, he had to win the candidates. And before the last round, I think it was back in 2012 or 2000, something like that, Carlsen, um, he was equal with uh, Kramnik, I think. But uh, if Kramnik would... For, for instance, win the last game and Carlsen would make a draw, then Kramnik passed to the uh, World Championship match against Anand. So both of them lost in the end. Maybe you know the story. So Kramnik played with the black pieces against Ivanchuk and he played the Pierce. I have the game here. I can tell you what happened. It transposed like this. And at this point, Kramnik played uh, A6. Yeah, you never see Kramnik play things like that, dubious openings like this. But he needed to beat uh, Ivanchuk to get... Uh, the seat in the World uh, Championship. So he risked very much. Uh, this is how his game went. Bishop g5. Please notice that Ivanchuk sends the bishop to g5. He didn't play bishop e3, which looks more harmonious. Anyone, could you tell me why did they play bishop g5 first? Why don't you just put the bishop on e3? What's the benefit of putting the bishop on g5? Aha, to provoke h6. Exactly. We just come back since we played h3. They don't have knight g4. Beware that Kramnik will do this himself in our game against Nihal. But this is what happened back in that uh, day. Oh, actually, he, he played b5, Kramnik, and a3, h6. Now he played bishop e3 here, Ivan took in that game. So that's, that's how their game went. Anyone, should white take uh, advance or none of, the, of, none of the previous? What would you do? Push? Aha, he didn't push. I think if you push, this is exactly what Kramnik wanted. So he could go for an attack on the king side, like in King's Indian style, but white is missing c4, c5. No, he didn't do that. Also, he didn't, uh, Ivanchuk, also, he didn't keep the tension because I guess maybe black can get pressure on, on this pawn or something. He took on e5. And that's probably a good idea in some of these positions. And then he played queen c1 and he brought his rook to d1. And yeah, white was slightly better in this, in this game. Ivanchuk went on to win. Um, so Carson was the fortunate one because he actually lost to... 
uh, to Svidler in that uh, last round, I think. So had Kramnik just played normal stuff like the the Rai Lopez Berlin, he would have made a draw perhaps, and then he would he would have qualified. But okay, Carlson could have won also. So we're just speculating. Anyway, that's what happened back back in those days. So here Kramnik is facing his own opening on that occasion. You can meet this uh, mo- modern in many ways, of course. It's possible to play knight c3 and bishop e3 and queen d2 and castles and things like that. You can also play with f4, but what he played is very, very solid. No, he just plays the, the, the classical system with, with bishop e2 and knight f3. Maybe he will go c4 going into the king's Indian, or maybe not. After Nihal's next move, it was not possible. So he played here knight c3. Castles, castles, and Nihal played knight c6. That's where we are deviating from Kramnik's game with the black pieces. So, uh, what happened next? Well, this is a blitz game, 3 plus 2. You don't think too much. Uh, Kramnik played here the move d5. If you don't do that, black will break with e5. So, it's good to play d5 before they get a chance to play e5. Uh, black went back with the knight. Now, they would like to like uh, soften up white's center. Uh, he played here simply h3, so as to prepare the bishop's uh, development to, to e3 without having to bother about knight g4. And also it can be nice that they cannot trade off the bishop. Black played c6. I checked this a little and I noticed that actually in contemporary games, e5 is scoring rather well for black. Pawn takes, knight takes, and then you play bishop takes, and then knight c6. It seems that black is quite okay in this position. Of course, white could play something else. But if you compare it to the king's Indian, we're missing c4, c5. So it can't be that good, right? So maybe that was a better choice in this blitz game. But uh, all right, Nihal played c6 after h3, c6, and Kramnik played here the move a4. Anyone, why do you play a4? What's the point of that move? Exactly, to stop b5, common sense. It's, it's good to stop that once and for all. Uh, Nihal played in the game after a4, he played a5. Probably he wanted to avoid uh, white from expanding a5. And now our move came, bishop g5. Interesting move. The point is simply that if h6, the bishop is bouncing back, and then we can uh, win a tempo like that. So Nihal played knight a6, bringing the knight to the center. What does this game have to do with attacking play then? Well, so far, nothing, no? Look how natural he plays here. Rook e1. Anyone? Why do we play rook e1 here? What's the point? Apart from developing the rook. Uh, why did he do that? Well, he wanted, exactly, he wanted to meet knight c5 with bishop f1. Such short variations are very... Useful when you play Blitz, for instance, you simply try to find like, uh, yeah, short term solutions. But I would say in long term, it's also making perfect sense. The bishop is not in the way for anyone here. And if you later on manage to play e5, of course, it's great to have the rook on e1. After rook e1, black played knight d7. So what could we say about this move? Um, slightly suspicious, no? You could say always bishop f1, exactly happy pawn. Knight e7, you could say uh, a, a general drawback of knight e7 what might that be anyone you can just write in the chat what would be a general drawback with this move don't forget we're talking attacking games we can stay seven pawn maybe yeah maybe bad bishop king side undefended h factor leaves the king exactly brian i will go with your uh, explanation leaves the king we are removing defenders from the king side that's a little suspicious right and it's like Kramnik already smells blood here, like there is attack coming up, right? And he plays here the move queen d2. Like, yeah, beginner would play the same move, right? Queen d2 to play bishop h6 and try to trade off the bishop. Aha. So maybe black should have played something else here. Maybe after all, it was better to play knight c5 and maybe try to break with e5. But all right, let's see what happened in the game. Rookie 1, knight 7 queen d2, knight b4. Very sneaky move by Nihal. You can see that if white plays bishop h6, well... Black had something prepared, all right? I'll quiz you for this very quickly. Let's see if anyone can think this as quickly as Nihal could in the game. All right, you get only 40 seconds because we're a little low on time. Moves the king further from the king. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, oh. Brian, wow, you're so fast. No, almost as fast as Nihal, I think. Impressive. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Chicky and uh, Marcus and everyone else. You got it the wrong move order if you played like that. I'm very sorry. Don't underestimate uh, Kramnik's attack here. <laughs> Although he didn't play that in the game. 
Aha, Brian, GM, John, Chess, Turnip, Ananya, you're right. That's exactly how we should play. You have to think about the move order here, okay? You have to think about the move order. We, we see some really basic stuff here. It's good that we, uh, that we include this example also. So please go ahead, uh, Xalicia, you can show us how should black continue here. The move order is extremely important here. Exactly. We take like that. We will come to the other order, right? If queen takes, of course, bishop takes. If bishop takes, we are very fortunate that we can take a rook. And this means that when they take on f8, we can take on f3. And we emerge with an extra pawn, right? And more importantly, they have no attack. If you play the other way, if you play the other way, poor you. If you played like this and you were actually going to take on c2, well, you get executed here. So you will do this also, right? We will do this very quickly so that everybody will uh, take part of the fun here. All right, I'll do this very quickly. Uh, if you play your cards correctly, you will mate me here. But I will only give you 20 seconds, so you better move fast, all right? 20 seconds, mission, mate black. Mm-hmm. L, John Sam, Mr. Chicky, Gordon. Yeah, everybody got this right. Nice. You're fast thinkers. I should have give you, given you only five seconds. Everybody got this. That's really great. You must have a high rating on chess.com and so on. Uh, please go ahead, uh, kind King Sam. You can show us how does white win here. Aha, so when we have this kind of attack, try to find a way to deflect that knight. You found this in milliseconds. E5, of course. Clearing the e5, e4 square, sorry, for the knight. Uh, I have the lowest rating on chess.com. Really? But here you, you thought very quickly, Santra. Uh -huh. Exactly. And we don't have to see the rest, right? You're mating me here. F7. Nice. So that's what uh, Nihal managed to see here in this blitz game. Uh, night before that bishop h6 would not be possible. But Kramnik, of course, he did not fall into this. He continued with very natural moves. I really like uh, to see blitz games by these strong players like Kramnik because we learn something about common sense also. He played bishop f1 because he knew that he should put the bishop there anyway, right? It's, it was the correct place for the bishop. Rook e8, now black doesn't even have to think about this. And the next move, I'll give you just five seconds for the next move. What should you play in the blitz game? Uh, if you play a move like this, what should we play? Common sense, l008, you got it. Aha, common sense dictates that we should bring all the pieces to the to the game. If you said e5, I'm sorry, guys, that's too soon. And you would also not be able to calculate it in the blitz game. You should play like L said. All right, L, please go ahead. Don't get angry at me. I'm, yeah, you were the only one. I'm just trying to help you a little here about uh, common sense. Uh, this move can never hurt, right? It can never hurt to have the rook there. At least in the blitz game, you can do this. You, uh, you can use common sense to pick the moves. In the classical games, of course, you can be a little more specific. All right, rook d1. Nihal played queen b6. It was already difficult to see a good plan for him. And here, on the other hand, you will have to do something more, uh, what can I say, something more sophisticated, all right? So, mission for you guys, mission, trade off those bishops, all right? Mission for everyone, trade off the Fianchetto bishop. How can that be done? Okay, HDI, Chess Turnip, John Sam, Ryan the Greatest, Yugoslavian, congratulations, you have found it. I'm sorry, Wyatt, Elephant, and so on. If you play like that, I don't have to take, and I think I have Nihal's trick still. I think I have Knight takes it too still. <laughs> the trick is still around, so don't do that. Okay, Tactical Magician, Scalicia, Yugoslav and Berserker. Yeah, we have a bunch of winners here. Yeah, you're right. Very nice little bishop maneuver that we can use in order to trade off their only defender, the only defender that they have right now. We're talking about aggressive exchanges we should try to trade off that um, defending bishop on g7. So please go ahead, Fianchetto. You can tell us uh, what did white play here? What did Kramnik play with the white pieces? Exactly. Bishop e3 and after knight c5. Now we're ready to trade off the bishops. Or at least provoke the horrible move f6. This would be disastrous for black to play move like that. We could perhaps go back with the bishop and bring in the knight instead and try to somehow, yeah, I don't know, continue the attack or something. Please notice that if you played instead bishop h6, uh, well, in that case, I think Nihal's uh, trick is still available, right? I think this still works. I, I don't think we are mating them here. Um, if you try something like... Yeah, you can't make this work, right? It's, it's impossible. I can always play something like, I think, f6, and, and you're not 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't see that I'm getting mated. Uh, I'll try to bring in my knight mobilization to the defense and so on. Okay, thanks, uh, Sarthak. You showed up la last and you went away first. Yeah, no problem. So, Bishop e3, that's what he played in the game. Uh, we will finish this in a very short while, all right? Um, as soon as possible. Let's, let's just see how Kramnik continues his attack. So, Bishop d4, that's what uh, happened here. Exactly. Black took on d4, knight takes d4. And uh, it's already very unpleasant. You can see that, unfortunately, black is out of defenders. It's like a time bomb here, this position, time bomb. Uh, you know that sooner or later, white will uh, yeah, break through here. They played in the game, bishop d7, and I will quiz everybody for the next move here. Um, anyone, what do you think white should play here? What would be like, exactly, L, this is common sense, HDI, you got it. Aha, we bring in the attackers. There is no dark squad bishop, so the, the door is open, you could say, uh, to Black's place here. Aha, Ryan, you got it, King, King Sam, GM, and so on. Rook e3, I like it, a nice uh, rook maneuver. I didn't think of, of that. Uh, maybe you could play like that also. Aha, uh -huh. bring in the rook. Yeah, nice plan, nice plan. If you played rook e3, uh, you get half a point. If this was your plan, rook e3, h4, h5, that looks great. What Kramnik played was somewhat simpler. Uh, all right, uh, HDI, you can tell us what should uh, White play here. There is no dark squad, so attack on dark squad, says happy pawn. Yeah, that's what probably what Kramnik thought also in this blitz game. So queen h6, yeah, we are getting closer and closer. We need more pieces, of course, to attack. They played in the game e5, trying to keep things closed, but Kramnik said no. D takes e6, opening up the game, and interestingly, at this moment, Kramnik could win a pawn, right? He could take on e6 and probably take on on d6. Black could not really take like that. It would be too dangerous. The bishop is coming. Black would have to take back like that and rook takes c6. The computer will tell you that white is much better here, but I think that for the human eye uh, that was not so obvious. Maybe something like queen c5, and e5, I don't know, bishop f5, something like that. Uh, yeah. Please don't forget that computers will say one thing because they can calculate everything, but we should keep some kind of human perspective, right? So Having said that, I will just quiz you for the next move. Yeah, maybe that was knight xd2 also, you're right. Okay, uh, Gordon, HDI, Hollow Blade, Tactical, everybody got this right. Aha, uh -huh, nice. Wyatt, Marcus, and so on. A lot of winners here. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, Ryan, I think you, you got every single move uh, so far. So uh, I'll try to bring, bring you up so that you can show us the next move here. What did Kramnik play? How did he manage to get closer to Nihal's king? That's what we are asking ourselves here. Happy pawn, Ryan the greatest, and so on. Uh, nice. Okay, we have so many winners, uh, but I can't. I can't pick. Uh, I should pick Ryan because Ryan got basically all the positions here, and we haven't asked Ryan yet. So, uh, if I can find you here, I'll. Yeah, so many names. Yeah, here is Brian. All right, Brian, please go for it. What should White play? Knight f5. Beautiful move. You don't need to be a world champion to find it, of course. Uh, we cannot easily understand it. Black is sort of defenders, and if black takes on f5, uh, we get a little helper here in our attack. Aha, we can take with the pawn. Please notice that in this position, <coughs> maybe black gets some chances for survival because they will have knight f5 and they don't get mated. Maybe. So what we could do here at this point, we could wait one more move with this. Aha. So instead of taking on f5, we could actually take somewhere else. Where would you take, Brian? If you don't take on f5, where could you take instead to, to create more danger to Black's position? What might we play here? Aha, we can take on d6 instead. Yeah, exactly. That's a mouse slip, I think, Brian. You, you can't really expect to bring the rook that way, so rook takes d6. I had a quick look th at this, and there was a funny tactic I wanted to show you. Queen c7. Uh, anyone? What would White play here? What will Kramnik play in the blitz game? No, he would not play rook e3. He would have to calculate too many things here. Maybe double, I can sack and so on. Nobody sends me the move. Yeah, e5, interesting also. e5, what could I play? Could I play maybe king, king h8 and try to bring in the rook or something? Yeah, rook d1, hollow blade. Thanks, thanks for it. There is hope for humanity. Rook d1, please use all your pieces. This puts more pressure on black. If rook d8, now we can take. And the funny tactic that I wanted to show you is here. Uh, f6, knight f5, and question, where should the queen go? Yeah, weird tactic, 
but uh, maybe it could be useful for you. So here we go. Uh, you get for this mission 30 seconds, all right? Very strange tactic. So don't play Queen G5. I told you it's a strange tactic. More strange than that, all right? Yeah, yeah, no hard feelings. Yeah, no hard feelings. Queen G5, King H8, HDA, you found a strange tactic. Okay, congratulations. If Queen G5, King H8, Rook takes D7. Yeah, okay, we will come to that. Tactical magician, you showed your magic here. Aha. Uh, weird tactic. Adi chess, you also got it. That's right. Yeah. Learning with computers, right? <laughs> so please go ahead, uh, Adi. You can tell us what uh, should White play here. Completely unexpected. Yeah, Queen D2. You can guess who told me about this move. Aha. Hitting the bishop. And no matter how I take on D6, there is the same reply. Aha. We, we, now we give check because we can pick up the queen and they cannot take back because they have this to, to worry about. Aha, something like that. If, if they play rook g8, I guess you go back with the queen and you're much better anyway. Yeah, crazy tactic. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Probably you can win in other ways also. All right, let's uh, wrap this up. Let's see what happened in the game. He took in the game. Nihal took on c2 instead in the game. And Kramnik just continued with his attack. He played here rook takes d6. Aha, bringing more pieces to the attack, you could say. There are some ideas also with eliminating the knight. Uh, Black played in the game. G takes f5. There were some other variations here, but that's what happened in the game. And uh, here there was a pretty move that he didn't play anyone. Pretty move, perhaps? Prettier than rook d3? Prettier than e takes f5? What can be prettier? Prettier than rook d1? 95 L, you got it. That that was a very nice move. Okay, he's he's not a machine. No, he cannot see every tactic. But this was a clever move because you have knight f6 coming up next. Uh -huh. Maybe he didn't see fully, clearly, this situation. So he just took back on, on f5. Yeah, he played it in a simple way. He takes f5. The rook was hanging, but Kramnik doesn't care. The next move is yours, everybody. Who is missing in this party? Who has not been invited yet? If you play f6, I go king h8. And if you go rook takes e6, I go rook g8. Aha, you're right, Brian, Yugoslavian, GM, legendary goat. That's right, Ryan, Marcus, Connor. That's a pretty move, right? Kramnik knows to use all his pieces in the attack. Aha, that's right. Maybe he didn't like c takes d5, knight takes e1. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's maybe that's the reason, uh, Holo, you're right. Yeah, hard to play three-minute games, no? And, and play with per perfect, uh, yeah. To, to play all the perfect moves. Legendary ghost, goat, Digo, not ghosts. Please go ahead. What would you play here with the white pieces? Aha, we bring more pieces to the attack. That's right. Knight e4, knight f6 is coming up. Uh, very difficult to save black. If you wanted to play rook takes e6, by the way, or what was it? f6. If you go f6, I think I go like this. And if you take like that, I can play rook g8. I think there is even a smart tactic. I can play something like this also. And I can play rook g8 and I have some plans for a counterattack. Why not knight e5? Why not knight e5? Uh, where are we? We are here, right? Pawn takes, knight takes e5, and knight e5. I think knight e5 was fine also. Yeah, I think that was okay. Um, let's see here. Could I use this strange tactic uh, in that case? Uh, who was who was talking, by the way? It was... Uh, yeah. No, I can't probably, right? Yeah, that looks great also. You're right. You're right. Good point. Knight e5 should also be a very good move here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, chess turnip says, says 95. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe take in that case. And you take my queen and I... Wow. Now it looks like, uh, yeah, Second World War here. I don't know how to defend uh, black in this position. Yeah, it looks completely disastrous. Yeah, knight g7 and... Maybe. Yeah, maybe I can ho hold on here. Yeah, maybe we've not lost after all. You see what I mean? Something like that in king h8. And, and I even have some evil tricks like... Knight f3 and rook. My black might be better. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And and in a blitz game, of course, you want to keep things simple. No? So Kramnik uh, played knight e4 instead. Now there is no sack against the knight. So I think that was better, uh, knight e4. They played in the game king h8. And here Nihal had his like last hope of uh, fooling Kramnik if knight f6. He had prepared probably to play knight f3. Funny move. You're coming back with the knight. And if g takes f3... You're just in time to sack the rook and bring the rook to the defense. Interesting, no? Don't forget that this is also coming. So we should always be a little careful when attacking. Uh, our own king can also be in danger now when you're attacking. So uh, anyone, what do you think he played here? Keep it simple, great book on chessable. Aha. 
uh, added chess. So anyone, what would you play here? If it's not knight f6, if it's not pawn takes e6, king h1, yeah, but then you're maybe inviting at some point, I don't know, queen, queen takes, if I could go like rook g8 first perhaps. Uh, yeah, king moves, interesting. No, he, elephant, you're right. Please go ahead, uh, elephant, you found it. That's what he played. Yeah, impressive, no, impressive. He's still smelling blood here, Kramnik, he knows that. If he can take on f7, it's over, because that would be like two mating ideas at the same time. Knight f3, all right, elephant. Should we take or should we not take? What do you think? Actually, both are okay, so it's your choice. You you choose like Kramnik, aha. Uh -huh. You could also take and you're still better, but this was even simpler. King h1, now you can see the end is near. Too many threats. Queen takes b2 was tried by Nihal. Uh, and now you can win in different ways. Yeah, by the way, as you can see, sorry, sorry, just to say that they cannot do this because our knight is still there, right? So queen takes, exactly, you could take on f7 and you're completely winning. If knight f8, for instance, what would you play here? Um, Who is playing? Elephant. Yeah, exactly, knight f6. Pretty, no? We're getting ready to mate in a few different ways here. Yeah, at least four different mating ideas. Aha. He, he played in the game the other way around. He started with knight f6. And after knight g5, all right, guys, I will have to quiz you on this one just to make sure that we're on the same page. But you get only 10, 20 seconds for this, all right. Yeah, we're over the time also. Okay, everybody got this right. Aha, fun topic now, attacking chess, especially with, when Kramnik is playing with the white pieces. Aha, that's what he played. Little masterpiece now. Don't forget about those uh, um, Title Tuesday games. Okay, Kang King Sam, Fianchetto Charles, Yami Yoki, Legendary, Adi Chest, Salicia, John Sam, and so on. Everybody got this right. Charles, please go ahead. You can tell us how did the uh, white continue here. Aha, we are ready to bring our last piece to the, well, almost last piece. This one has to keep track of the king, right? That was his mission in this game. But now we are mating them, right? In one way or another. Uh, Nihal tried in the game, Queen takes F6. No, I don't, I don't think he did that, right? He had already resigned, yeah. But this would be the last. Uh, try, but obviously uh, I'm getting mated here by Charles. Aha. So that's a nice uh, little finish. Uh, I hope you like this attacking game. You could say a key moment, for me at least, it was here when Nihal moved away the, the knight. This was for me the key move. Please remember, guys, this very clever bishop maneuver trying to trade off the, the defender on g7. And also, please remember, maybe, just maybe, this kind of uh, deliberate knight uh, maneuver away from the king that could be a little dangerous uh, on some occasions now. And also remember Kramnik's like common sense play here, bring the pieces to the to the battle or so. All right, I think that's it for today. Thanks everyone. Thanks to Chess Dojo, to Chess Level, to uh, USCS Greg Shahadi, and thanks to everyone who was here today. See you next week. Bye bye.